After leaving Elias and Röber, we headed north, to the city of Svolvar. A more suburban stay than our previous location, but nonetheless just as stunning. We'd be staying away from the heart of the city, on the tranquil island of Svinoya. An island full of beautiful and cosy fishermen's huts, this would be our home for the next three days. The northern lights had so far been elusive, teasing us through the clouds, so we were determined to get a better look at them here on the island of Spinoya. We were welcomed to the island by heavy snowfall, which didn't bode well for our chances of seeing the lights. We weren't downhearted however, as we had plans to see much more than just the northern lights during our stay on this island. We kicked things off with a delicious meal at the restaurant Borsen Spiersi, where we were treated to four courses of Norwegian delicacies. Then it was time for an early night in preparation for the day ahead. It was finally time for our first wildlife encounters of this Norwegian road trip. We were kindly invited out by Lofton Explorer to venture into the nearby fjords to see if we could find some white-tailed sea eagles. It wasn't long before the eagles had found us. Growing to two and a half meters in wingspan and weighing in at almost five kilograms, these eagles are formidable predators. It was incredible to see their speed and agility, even if it made photographing them in flight a little tricky. We were all smiles after an incredible day out on the water. Incredible day out looking for the sea eagles with Lofton Explorer. Honestly, it wasn't the best conditions in the morning, it's really dark and raining as well. But once we got out and actually found the eagles, it all went away. Bird photography isn't exactly my forte, so it took a bit of time to get the settings right. But I think I got them in the end and ended up getting some pretty cool shots. It's incredible to see how many of the eagles there were next to us, as well as how close they came as well. They're kind of habituated to people, so they come a bit closer and aren't so afraid of people, but it's incredible to see. There's such big birds as well. can grow to over three meters in wingspan, which is massive. And with those beautiful orange feet and beaks up against the white snow, it made for some incredible imagery. Incredible time. Hopefully we'll go out again and see some more. But for tonight, we're going to try and find the lights. They've been elusive over the last couple of nights, so let's see if they turn up today. Whilst the strength of the lights was meant to be good, the cloud cover prevented us from seeing them once again. I did, however, have a great time photographing the area using my drone, and I even had the chance to try night photography using the drone for the first time. I've wanted to try this mode on my drone for ages now, and this beautiful little town under the watch of this incredible mountain was the perfect chance. I love the way the lights of the cabin stand out against the pitch black of the icy fjord surrounding the island. The next morning we were up early for another day out in the water with Lofton Explorer. They were kind enough to invite us out again and we were thrilled to have another chance to see the sea eagles. Having learned from our first experience with the eagles, we were able to fine tune our camera settings in the hopes of getting better pictures than the first day. I was incredibly happy with the images that I was able to get with my new Sony 2-600mm lens, which I got specifically for this trip. The eagles are just so regal looking, and I love the way the orange of their beaks and feet contrast against the white of the snow. Okay, so we're back again to go out with the sea eagles with Lofton Explorer. This is the third day in the row that we've been out. The first day was a lot of experimentation. I'm not really a bird photographer, so bringing out the lens settings and the camera settings to be able to get crisp shots of the eagles was a bit of a learning curve on the first day. On the second day, we definitely nailed it and got some really good shots. Today, the aim is to get as much footage as possible on the big camera, not just on the GoPro or on my phone. It's gonna be really difficult because even when the boat is stationary, it's still moving with the waves and with the long lens zoomed in so much, every vibration gets picked up. So we're gonna try our best to get some good footage. Let's see what happens today. The fjords surrounding the island of Svolver are just stunning and on this day we were incredibly lucky to have clear skies and incredible lighting as well. This image that I took of these incredibly remote cabins on the side of this mountain is definitely one of my favourites from this entire trip. One of my favourite spots during these sea safaris was definitely the Troll Fjord. It's aptly named as in Norse mythology, this was the fjord that the trolls were meant to have lived in. Not only is it a beautiful spot, it's also an incredibly important location for the conservation of white-tailed sea eagles. Once hunted to the brink of extinction, white-tailed sea eagles have made a roaring comeback across the world since they were given protection, and Lofoten is home to 20% of the world's population of these eagles. 
The speed at which they swoop down into the water to catch their prey and are able to change direction in midair is just a marvel to see. We were incredibly lucky with the lighting on this day and the golden hour was just perfect to showcase the amazing colours on these birds. Now, shooting with a long lens off a moving rib definitely wasn't the easiest thing, especially without a gimbal, but I'm happy with the footage that we were able to get and I think it gives you a good idea of just the sheer size of these incredible birds as well as how elegant they are. It was amazing being able to spend this much time with these beautiful birds and we can't thank Lofferton Explorer enough for taking us out. Definitely go and check them out if you're in Lofferton. After an incredible few days on Svinoya, it was time for us to move on to our final location of this Norwegian road trip. Kremovika Røbe is a beautiful family-run accommodation which we heard was surrounded by great spots for wildlife. Chucking it through the snow, looking for owls today. And then made for moose afterwards as well. Beautiful day. <laughs> Light there is in the sky, not much clouds today. So hopefully we get some good shots. Now if you thought that those sea eagles were fast, just check out the speed of this northern short-eared owl. This individual definitely tested my speed at which I could snap onto focus, but I'm incredibly happy with how these images came out. After looking at the weather reports for that evening, we weren't hopeful of seeing the northern lights, but just when we were about to give up hope, the sky erupted into colour right above our heads. It was the moment that we'd been hoping for, as the clouds parted for a moment and the northern lights danced across the sky. These shots were taken just a few steps outside of our cabin at Kremovica, and this will be a night that we remember forever. A magical night, followed by a very contrasting morning. Just a little bit wet and windy today. That whole area there, it's like an ice rink. Spent 10 minutes trying to get back to the house from that pier. Look at this little gremlin. Safe to say we won't be going outside today, obviously. The northern lights had shown themselves in just the nick of time, as over the next few days we'd find ourselves engulfed in Norway's worst ever storm. With gusts of up to 72 miles an hour, we had no choice but to hunker down in our cabin with the walls shaking around us. Our amazing hosts at Kremovica were kind enough to make us yeah, a home-cooked meal, now. as we shared stories and some local cherry liqueur. A brief break in the storm allowed me the opportunity to explore the local surroundings. I took this chance to take a look at some of the amazing artwork around the Kramaveka base before eventually finding myself at one of the local cod fisheries. Cod is the lifeblood of this part of Norway and these cod drying racks are a staple site across the Lofoten Islands. The cod dries on these racks from late winter into spring, by which time it's completely bone dry and easy to transport across Norway and to the rest of the world. I really like the contrasting warm and cold tones in these pictures and these are definitely some of my favourite pictures that I've taken during this trip. It wasn't long before the storm, named Ingen, was back in full effect and we were being bombarded by hurricane speed winds again. It might not have been the perfect end to the trip that we'd been hoping for, but we had a great time nonetheless in our cosy cabin at Kremovica. We've experienced so much of what these incredible islands have to offer over the last couple of weeks and made some unforgettable memories. And whilst this might be the end of our Norwegian road trip for now, it isn't quite the end of our Scandinavian adventure. <laughs>